Hey guys, Anthony, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over a back testing session just to go over how I personally trade price action in real time. A lot of questions have been asked on how to actually go ahead and do that and a, lot of, a little bit of confusion. So we're gonna go on FX replay live and just go through a back testing session so you can see the trades I would take and why I would take them and the confirmations I would use. If you're new here, I personally trade futures. I've been trading for four years now and I trade NASDAQ and ES, which is the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ in the futures. And it's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable, lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned and lots of pain. But over time I became more consistent and I believe that you will as well if you're not ready. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Real quick, if you do like these kind of videos, just hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. It lets me know you like them and I can make more of them. So let me know in the comments down below and let's dive into the video. So we're on FX replay. First thing we're gonna do is click create session. We're just gonna put a random account balance. We're going to select NQ as the pair and ES as the other pair. And then we're just gonna select a random date. Um, we'll start off with, let's say March. We'll just go to like uh, March 4th. Make sure we start at 9 a.m. I personally trade usually like 10 a.m. Eastern to about 1 p.m. That's when most of my trade entries are, but um, I can take trades uh, throughout the day. I just give myself a maximum of two entries a day. It all depends on how the, the AM session goes. So we're just gonna restart, reset to chart view. And what I like to do is first, I'll make sure that we get rid of all the drawings. And I like to have ES and NASDAQ highlighted. So we have three things right now. So we have, um, this was NASDAQ, NASDAQ, and NASDAQ. So we have the NASDAQ on the four hour. In the middle is NASDAQ on the five minute. And then the left, we're gonna make NASDAQ on the one minute. So we're just going to move ahead to about uh, 10 a.m. If you're unfamiliar with FX Replay, um, head over to my buddy, Mac Gray, uh, his YouTube channel. He has an affiliate link with FX Replay and you can go ahead and subscribe there. It's just basically the best possible software you can use to backtest because of the live data you can um, collect compared to TradingView. Like you can't go back nearly as far uh, on TradingView, but on FX Replay, you can go as far back as you want and then do a whole bunch of features, but Mac has a video on, on all that stuff. So you can go ahead and check that out there. And we're just gonna start back testing. So um, I changed the color of my candles, as you can see, uh, just to remove emotions. And I like to wait until 10 a.m. And at 10 a.m., I'll go ahead and look at the four hour, the one hour, and I'll see which index is stronger between a NASDAQ or ES. Uh, if NASDAQ is stronger, then I'm gonna be looking for long setups on NASDAQ. Uh, and I'm not going to look for longs on ES. I'm only going to take the setup on NASDAQ if it pre presents and then vice versa. So let's say on a certain day, NASDAQ's weaker than, and I like the, the price action for shorts, then I'm going to short NASDAQ. Um, but what I won't do is let's say we're, you know, we have bullish market structure on ES and NASDAQ. So we're moving up, but ES is weaker. It's not moving up as much. I'm not going to look for a short on ES, if that makes sense. I'm only using... I'm only trying to see which one's stronger so I can take the long if it's stronger on the upside or if it's stronger to the downside as in weaker, then I'm gonna look for the shorts if the market structure also suggests that it's weaker. Now, moving on, once we have discovered that, um, so you know you can see on the four hour that we are, are very bullish on the NASDAQ, right? So we're just seeking higher. So we have to expect that we should continue to seek higher. So we can what we can do is we can go over to ES and just look at ES in the four hour and see if it looks weaker. Um, right now, ES actually looks stronger in the four hour. So we could look for longs on, on ES today for this day, Monday, March 4th. The second thing we have to do is we have to pull up the news. For news, I go to Forex Factory and I see Monday, March 4th. I see that there is nothing I need to be careful of for news. So we are good there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward about one minute at a time. Um, what I can see right now is that we have a bullish market structure. We could retrace into this four hour fair value gap before continuing higher on ES or NQ, but I'm gonna mark out the most likely areas of liquidity. And this means that I'm just putting out targets of where we're likely to go. So we're likely to go take out the highs above because we are bullish and when we're bullish, we're likely to go and make higher highs. So I put one on ES there and then on NQ, I'm gonna put one on NQ, but NQ does look a little weaker. Uh, not as good for long. All right, now that that's good, we're gonna fast forward one minute and we're gonna see if we can get a long. So let me take a look at ES now. Whoops, let's take a look at ES now at 10 o'clock. Yep, ES much stronger. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out 
some fair value gaps on the five minute that we could come back into and trade out of. That's good there. All right, so I'm probably gonna watch, I'm gonna watch uh, ES today on this day. So we're gonna have ES here on the four hour, good. ES and then ES on the one minute. So now we're all set up, looks good. We're gonna take a look at the 15 minute to see if we're potentially coming into a fair value gap. Okay, so we are still leaning a little bit bearish, but I will mark out this fair value gap here on the 15 in case we retrace into it on the five minute. Uh, perfect. 15 minute liquidity, uh, equal highs are here. So we're likely to go take out, uh, first target being this, uh, 5141, but it's very close, right? So we're not going to really get a trade entry off that. And then here is the one minute chart. All right. So yeah, that's most likely the next target up there. Let's go ahead and fast forward, see if we can get a setup. All right, so in terms of setups, I'm looking for the five minute to shift uh, bullish market structure, which it has, we have shifted bullish. Then I want the five minute to retrace into either the 15 minute fair value gap and trade back out uh, on the one minute or uh, retrace back out down into that five minute fair value gap, which is down here, and then trade out of it. And if we do that on the one minute, that's where I'm taking my entries, but I'm basically looking at the four hour, one hour, five minute and 15 minute to decide what I'm gonna do. Okay, so pull back into the 15 minute fair value gap, uh, closed out uh, on the one minute. So I feel strongly about that that target up here. So this could be a trade, but I don't like to take that trade. I like to wait for the five minute candle to close. So could miss the trade, could work out. We're gonna watch and see. Okay, so the five minute did close out, but I like to see an engulfing on the five minute and then a pullback. Yeah, so now we'll probably go take out that, yeah, took out that. So now this is irrelevant because there was equal highs there. It was likely to be targeted. It's irrelevant. So now um, to the upside, next target be 51.45 and then the uh, four hour targets up here. So uh, we did get it engulfing now, right? So if ideally, if we got a pullback da back down, let's say down into here, then inverse this one minute fair value gap, we could honestly target uh, at least 51.45 and then possibly 51.49. But that's if we do get this pullback without taking the lows. Yeah, so right now, here's what we could do. So if we if we got a close, uh, if we pushed above this high, mid candle on the one minute, we can take along and then uh, make the target be uh, 51.45. So before I take this trade though, I wanna see and I wanna make sure that ES is still, I mean, ES is still the strongest on the day. So NQ, yeah, NQ is weak. So we're fine for longs. Let's go back to ES. Yeah, so if we do push above this, uh, as soon as we, so let's say we get in this, this trade right here, right, on the next one minute candle. If we're in the trade, I have to move the stop, the, I'm gonna move the stop to break even as soon as we take out liquidity uh, because this is a riskier trade. Uh, and you might be asking, well, why is this a, a riskier trade? It's because I like to wait for pullbacks into the five minute fair value gap down here but I'm just going based off of a 15 minute fair value gap. So it's a little more aggressive, right? Uh, and this still is choppier when you start to look at the 15 minute. Uh, let's go over to the one hour. Same with the one hour. So, you know, I do like the engulfing close. Uh, we could take it, we could take it out, could not. But anyways, basically game plan is if we do push above this high, I'm gonna move stop the break even. That's all you need to know. All right, so let's go back to the five minute chart on ES. Here we go, and we're targeting 51.45 because that's the next uh, major area of liquidity. So I use liquidity as targets. So we'd be in the trade now, stop is below here. If we do take out this high, we go to break even. Okay, so we took out the high, now we're break even, uh, but our eventual target is 51.45. Did not get stopped break even. Nah, we got stop. We got stop break even. We got stop break even. We didn't make it all the way up to the liquidity at fifty one forty five. Okay, so we're out at break even. Uh, market structure is still bullish. Mm, likely to still take out this high. See if we get another entry. So on the fifteen minute chart, looks good. Everything looks good. 
Um, one hour looks good. Yeah, so we are break even. We're out of that trade. Probably have to, probably have to wait for a whole new setup. But let's just uh, play forward here now. Hmm. Now, I'm not going to take this trade, but I would suggest I would assume uh, that we would take out this high now. And the reason being is because we double bottomed and then inverse the one minute fair value gap that shows strength. And yes, is a stronger index, so it's likely to go up there, but it's not a trade I would take. Okay, so it went for the equal lows before going up, and that's why we don't take those trades. All right, so let's see. Let me make sure again that um, ES is still stronger. Okay, so NQ, NQ is pushing up here. Let's take a look at NQ in the one minute. Okay. Mm, still bearish. Still bearish. I need to see a little more from NQ to take a trade. So let's go back to ES. All right, so we're still looking at ES. We still want to see 5145 get taken out, but we want to see if we can get an entry model. So we're going to go one at a time here. Okay, so if this five minute candle closes a bullish engulfing back out, um, I would take that as the trade entry because we did get this push out and now we're retesting the 50 minute fair value gap and then we're, tr we're closing out again. And that to me would be enough of a sign to take out those highs. So back to the five minute. What, what minute is this? Yeah, so that's the five minute candle close right there. So aggressive entry is taking the long right now. This is the aggressive entry. And then the stop would be all the way down at these lows. So four point stop, uh, target is 4.25. The more patient entry is now waiting for a pullback into this fair value gap on the one minute and a close out. So you know, just for the sake of this, we'll go by the more aggressive entry and we'll just say we get in now and the stop is uh, below the lows, uh, targeting the highs. Now this, in terms of this one, we would uh, have to move stops to break even um, after we take out this high here. Uh, a much safer bet though, would be waiting to get in long after we inverse this one minute fair value gap. When we close above this, it would be a safer long, but just because we got the close out in the five minute, the retest and then the close out again in the five minute, and ES being the stronger index makes me think that we will take out those highs. So we'd be in it. Um, still chipping away. As soon as we take out this high at 43, we have to move stop to break even. Okay, we took out the high now. So stop is break even. Uh, targeting these highs. Uh, break even again. All right, so we're out of break even. So two break evens, I'd be done at this point. I wouldn't be taking any more trades. All right, boom. So we took it out. Um, sometimes day, some days are like that. So both one R trades, uh, just over one R. This one's about one point five R. This is like one point one R, and um, it hits. But we move it to break even for a reason. So no problem there. And the reasoning behind all these trades these two trades was um, the 15 minute liquidity and that the one hour and the four hour was very bullish. So from the beginning of the day, we, we marked out these targets and then we just looked at which was stronger. And then we knew that if we are bullish and this index is stronger, it's likely to take out these highs. Uh, last target being the 51.49. So um, it's 12.30 now and we took out uh, one of our objectives here. Now you just wanna see, do we take out the next one? And we'll watch and see if we go to 51.49.
as we're chipping away here. All right, let's just skip ahead. Boom. We take out both objectives. There was a lot of lessons in this one day. So just to go back over this entire day from the start, what did we do? We looked at the higher time frame, the four hour, the one hour on ES and NASDAQ, and we determined areas of liquidity on the upside for targets because we were very bullish, right? Four hour, one hour is very bullish. So we have to assume on this given day, if the lower time frames start to shift the bullish, then our targets are the higher time frame highs because market structure makes higher highs and higher lows. That's the most important part. So once we did that, then we looked at ES and we looked at NASDAQ and we said, okay, which one's reacting stronger to the upside, which makes it easier for us to get in a long and have a higher probability of actually taking out those highs. Because if one's weaker and one's stronger and you get on the weaker one, the stronger one can take out the high and then the other one can reject the high or double top and then come back down on you, right? So that's the second thing that's very important. Identify which is stronger on the upside if you're looking for longs. Then the third thing is to wait for 10, 10 a.m. After 10 a.m., look at the market structure on the lower time frame, like the five minute and the 15 minute. If they're bullish, then we look on the one minute and we watch for a retracement into specific areas, let's say on the five minute or the 15 minute, like five minute fair value gaps or 15 minute fair value gaps. And we watch for a close back out of those fair value gaps, indicating that we want to continue to the upside on the stronger index. And then we enter in a long based on, let's say a one minute bullish engulfing after we've had this retest and, um, only if we can get a good risk reward ratio, we put in the stop loss below the most recent one minute swing low. And we target those uh, one hour or 15 minute liquidities or four hour liquidities. And then, uh, you know, we basically move stops to break even after like a five minute high has been taken out or some sort of liquidity has been taken out. We move it to break even because what can happen is if price doesn't want to be external, like taking out some important one hour or four hour swing highs, and it's a choppy day, then it can be very internal. And when it's very in internal, it just takes out a, like a five minute swing high or a one minute swing high, and then comes back down and takes out like a five minute swing low, one minute swing low, all while respecting the higher time frame uh, bullish uptrend. But it can do that where it takes out liquidity. So, you, you know, you just, you can get stopped out of plenty of times. Like as an example, those two trades I took easily could have just taken out the, the, the high, the first high that I moved the stop to break even, and then it could have taken out the low and stopped me out twice. Uh, the first trade did that second one actually hit the target so now you can see why it's important to move to break even after a certain liquidity has been taken out but that's a top top down analysis of exactly how i would um i i back test i count it as forward testing because this is the true way to back test so you're just going through you're setting a game plan you're looking at the full top down analysis you're saying okay if we do x then i'm going to take this entry on on y and target z right and then as it's playing out you you take the trade and you write down why you're moving to stop to break even when you do things of that nature. And that's more forward testing. So that's all done with, um, you can see, we, you know, everything we mapped out came to fruition. We just got stopped out at break even to protect ourselves. That's exactly how I personally back test. And I call it forward testing because I'm just making assumptions. I'm, I'm taking trades without seeing the future price. I'm laying everything out and this is trading price action only. And this is how, this is actually what makes people profitable. So if you just focus on price action and if you just do a bunch of back testing, gather one year or two years of data and you take pictures of all your trades and then study why you took the entry and then see if it was a win or a loss and then study why was it was a loss and you learn all these things over you know the next few years, you can be profitable far sooner than anyone else. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.